We got our hands on a pre-release model of the MagBot, so I'm excited because in this video, we're gonna give you all a first-hand look into this innovative little lighting modifier. We are huge fans of using gels and grids and any type of light modification that helps it to achieve our look and style. The problem is that we have a ton of these little accessories, which not only take up space, they're also really not that elegant when it comes to using them. We use these uh, off-camera grids, which are Velcro-based, which stick to each other, which is kind of annoying. We also use these gels, uh, which we Velcro all over our flash. Now using these, it totally works fine, but it's not a very elegant solution. They're noisy, we constantly lose them, they take up quite a bit of space in our bags, and so forth. And all of this stuff is a little bit on the cumbersome side, and that's why the inventor made the MagMod. But let's be honest, the MagMod really isn't anything revolutionary. It provides the same functionality of lighting modifiers that we already have and use within our kits. So I don't think it's really necessary to take these out on the shoot to show you what these images would look like, because they're going to look the same as they would if you were to use other types of gels and other types of grids and so forth. But what the MagMod does is provide light modification in a very elegant way. And let me show you exactly how it works. So the MagMod comes with this little base grip. And with this base grip, they're all made of silicon rubber parts, very well made. You take this uh, silicon rubber grip and you're just going to stretch it over the head of your flash. Now for this video, I'm actually using the 580EX2, which has quite a large uh, flash head. And so you can see that the MagMod fits actually pretty well. Once you get it in place, it's extremely secure. It's going to fit over most modern flash heads, but keep in mind that it probably isn't going to fit over something like that's very oversized. Like for example, this issue of, uh, well, the 285HV. Let me go ahead and grab one. Here we go. I'm going to step off camera for a second. Here is the 285HV. It has a huge, massive head, and something like this isn't going to necessarily fit over the 285HV, but that shouldn't really be an issue because I think most everybody's going to be using more modern flashes, which it'll fit over perfectly. Like I said, the 580EX already has a large head, and it fits totally fine. Now, once this is placed over the flash, you can now attach any modifiers for the system that you wish to use. So basically, we have uh, built-in magnets on each side of this. I can go ahead and just bring it down to the modifier that I want to use, and it quickly and easily adheres basically to the flash head. Again, these magnets are very strong, so I can shake it, I can do whatever with it, it's not going to fall off until a base guy intend to take it off. We can also apply multiple uh, attachments at one time. So if I want to apply this gel, in addition to my grid here, I can apply both. Now I have a gelled grid. It's a very simple way of applying these modifiers, and it's a very elegant way compared to this whole system. This is what we used to do. Okay, so we used to take this, I'm going to do a gel, and because this is a 285 HV, I'm also going to use an ND so that I can cut down the light more. I'm going to put that over there. And now I want to attach this other one so I have another layer of Velcro. This is literally what I do at weddings, by the way. So this is not an exaggeration. I do this all the time. So that's how I would attach everything to this. You can see all the Velcro that's used. It's a very kind of cumbersome setup. This is much more simple. So kudos, we dig it. Now let's talk briefly about the build quality. The silicone rubber for the base grip and the accessories, it's very thick, very high quality. It looks and feels like it's built to last. The magnets that are inside these little components as well, inside the attachments, they are very, very powerful. Now, if you're wondering if these magnets are going to affect, say, your electronics, then don't worry, they're not going to. Magnets really only affect things like spinning hard drives and old school floppy disks because those use powerful magnets to basically read, write, and alter their data. And even then, you're going to need a very powerful and specific magnet to have such an effect. They're not going to affect things like your flash, your memory cards, your camera. This is just a simple and common incorrect myth. Now granted, I'm not going to leave these inside of my desktop on the hard drive for safekeeping, but these magnets aren't going to do anything that you need to worry about. So let's talk about the cons as well. And one of the cons in my hand that you can actually see, it actually just occurred. So I'm going to show you. There are really only two things that I would bring up uh, that are both fairly minor issues. And the first is that the magnets that are inside of the rubber attachments, uh, they're very strong magnets. And so they do have a tendency to kind of pop out when you're pulling the modifiers on and off of each other. So for example, this modifier, it just basically the magnet here, I don't know if you can see that, it basically popped out. Not a big deal, you can place it back in and it's secure enough that it's not like when it pops out it's going to fall because it's going to stay very securely attached. But instead of doing that, instead of basically pulling them on and off, I found that it's easier to slide them. Even then it still popped out, we just have to basically pull it off and reset it back into this little 
uh, rubber thing here. Now you can of course flip them around so that basically the uh, the other side of the rubber is going to be touching this side. But at one point in time, you know, if you're attaching two or three of them at a time, most likely one of them is going to be metal to metal and that's when they're basically going to pop out. Now of course this isn't a huge issue. They are quite easy to put back into the silicone rubber. It can just be a little bit of an annoyance. You may want to try say gluing them in or doing something. And this is a pre-release model too so I'm not sure if this will be solved in uh, the actual release. Now the next con that I'm going to mention is just the overall price. And I understand that the MagMod is a specialty item. And with specialty items, they're always going to carry a higher price tag simply because the markets are much smaller and they have to in order to be profitable. You can still get the discount pricing for $79 as of the time of recording this video. And that comes with the basic MagMod kit. It'll include the grip, the grid, and the gel, uh, which is about 10 bucks off the standard retail price of 89 bucks. And that's saying that we can get this video out before the Kickstarter program ends. But at $89 retail, the MagMod isn't exactly a cheap lighting modifier, especially if you're intending to buy, say, two or three sets for multiple flash setups. Granted, the build quality, the entire concept, the design is very solid, and I would say that it's definitely worth the price. But I can't necessarily give it any extra points for also being an incredible bargain. So in conclusion, I dig the MagMod. We're going to give it four out of five stars because it's an incredibly well-designed solution for portable strobe light modification. In fact, I'd say that it's hands down probably the best designed solution for portable strobe light modification. If you're a photographer that loves to strobe, my recommendation is to act quick while the MagMod is still available via Kickstarter and go ahead and grab the double kit because the double kit is going to contain two grips, two grids, and two uh, gel sets for basically the discount price of $139 instead of what would be the standard retail price of like 178 bucks. So hope you all enjoyed this video and review. We'll see you all in the next video.